So, do you hear me, everyone? Yesterday, we did, I did the preliminary process of the uh, Great Compassion at Avalokiteshvara, 1,000 armed and 1,000 eyed initiation. And so, as I mentioned yesterday, generously, Avalokiteshvara is a deity of compassion. So if you do practice and meditation and recitation of Avalokiteshvara uh, <coughs> mantras and prayers, then you'll be, it helps to uh, uh, you th you, uh, to, for you to think of all sentient beings in this life and the lives uh, and all the other lives to come. <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, when sometimes and so the the uh, recitation of the mantra "Omanipe uh, Mehum" cannot cause you to. Uh, work for some kind of uh, uh, overcoming others or uh, subduing others and uh, so forth. And so on Mani Pei Mehom Mantra, six syllable mantra of Lok Shara is a blessed mantra. It's a full, of, full of blessings. So our Lok Shara also is the deity, the chosen deity of uh, Tibet. Otherwise, when you do other uh, uh, mantras of other deities, sometimes you could have other intentions. So while I do the in, uh, initiation, we could also do some meditation. Usually, when I do, uh, when I uh, come to the point of doing what is known as the uh, all-encompassing yoga, yoga mantra, all-encompassing yoga mind, we will do some meditation while I give you the introduction. And so we'll do meditation on uh, bodhicitta, the spirit of awakening, and uh, the view of emptiness. Okay, keep this in mind, please. So as I did the self-initiation earlier, you could, you should imagine me and the deity in the mandala to be inseparable. Please make the mandala offerings to request Loyal and Lama Yidam Gunjasum Labu, Tojo and Gishen and Dala Chingi Lab to Sun. You think it's a Yeshu Java Chawa, some is children, they should shoot your chin. May the great, may the sound of the great Dharma drum dispel the suffering of beings. May you live long to turn the wheel of Dharma to give us teaching. As I said, just said, so 
So the general risk of Lokiteshwara is the main deity of the mandala and, and inseparable from the master. Please repeat this. Oh, great. Please, you are my teacher. So, Master, please pay attention to me, the firm way of great enlightenment. I beg you, O oh, great protector, please grant me the pledges in spirit of the spirit of enlightenment, the Buddha and Dharma and Sangha. O oh, protector, please lead me to the supreme city of liberation. O oh, protector, please lead me to the supreme city of liberation. O oh, protector, please lead me to the supreme city of liberation. So for, for the time being, you are not allowed to see the secrecy of mandala. And so as the uh, name, secret mantra, a Vajra vehicle, so, of course, uh, Dantra was not taught in a great, um, um, in a public as such, but secretly. The first turning of the wheel of Dharma was given rather in um, public, and uh, then the second turning of the wheel of Dharma, when the Buddha taught emptiness in the Perfection Wisdom Sutras, he taught this to those to whom um, uh, the teaching of emptiness does not feel uncomfortable. And so it was the Panjaparamita teachings, the perfect and wisdom teachings were not given in uh, public as such. And therefore, there is question whether these uh, teachings of the perfect and wisdom uh, were real, actually taught by the Buddha or not. So here, this regarding Tantra, secret, refers to uh, the fact that this uh, set of teachings is something that the, uh, the sharp, intelligent ones uh, could actually um, think about. So, of course, when you say, I am a deity without going through the process of transformation of uh, meditation on through the meditation on emptiness and, and just think that, oh, I, I mean, uh, with this perception of this body, this gross body of flesh, bone and um, uh, uh, blo uh, uh, blood, I mean, that's a distorted um, perception. And so for... Regarding the Tantra, it is a practice that is something uh, done by beings with uh, sharp intelligence. And mantra refers to protection of mind from ordinary uh, perception and ordinary um, uh, uh, clinging. So Tantra has to be practiced in secrecy. So in India in the past, the general teaching of the Buddha was done in monastic institutions, but Tantra was given to a few uh, disciples, a few disciples secretly by uh, qualified teachers, and it wasn't given in a large uh, gatherings as such. And the, therefore, Tantra is said to be practiced secretly. So therefore here, for the time being, since you are not allowed to see the mandala, uh, the secrets of the mandala, you are given this blindfold. And then, when you remove the blindfold, you make an offering of uh, a flower garland. And so this is given to you in order to offer it to the mandala deities when you are able to see them. 
and do this lotus lineage gesture. First, fold, bring the two palms together, fold the hands, and then open the upper parts. So this is called the lotus lineage mudra. So this is a lotus lineage um, gesture. Hold this at your heart. Please repeat this mantra. Om Bema Upavaya Soha. So imagine you are given this flower, garland of flowers. As I explained yesterday too, the disciples first think of I. Of course, even the Buddha has the sense of I, even, and also those of the Arya of Bodhisattvas. But for us ordinary beings, when we think of I, Though you may have the same sense of I, but for those who have um, the experience of emptiness through the medita meditative power, what, what the bodhisattvas actually see is that I, when they think of an I, because of their realization of emptiness through meditative process, um, they can they can actually perceive this I to be merely designated. But for, for those who have no realization of emptiness, and what happens is when you think of an I, this I appears, and we also hold on to, to be something solid. So if that were the actual case of the I being in that way, it has to become clearer and clearer as you search for that, but that doesn't happen. So what you actually come across is you don't find yourself when you do this kind of analysis, scrutinize yourself where the I is or who this is. And so you, there's nothing that you can pinpoint this I at. You cannot point your finger at this or that. But you, what you should think is this I does not exist that the way it appears to me, as Chengyu Rebedoji says, so that I does appear to be to have some kind of solidity, solid existence in and of itself. But this is not how the I exists. So this actually for us, the I exists or the things. When we think, when we look at things, they, they appear as if there is some kind of a core identity to them that if we can add even kind of a, um, uh, that is even tangible and we can grasp at it, but that's not the case. So in other words, meditation, meditate on emptiness, bringing up this understanding that the things do not exist the way they appear to me, including yourself. And then from within that state of emptiness, you imagine yourself transforming into Avalokiteshvara. With an Avalokiteshvara and the three letters Om Ahum marks and uh, uh, your body, speech and mind. And next is uh, taking the Bodhisattva vows, as uh, I was already explained yesterday. Imagine Avalokiteshvara, five, uh, 1,000 eyes, 1,000 hands, together with his retinue, four retinues. And imagine Avalokiteshvara to be the um, embodiment of all objects of refuge. 
And then in the space before Avalokiteshvara, you imagine Buddha, the, uh, the close Bodhisattva disciples like Manjushri, Maitreya, and so forth. And then the masters like Nagarjuna and so forth, the, in other words, 17 Nalanda masters. So in other words, imagine all the uh, objects of refuge before you. We talk about the 16 elders, the 16 arahats, who were um, bound, uh, actually uh, told by the Buddha um, to keep the teaching of the Buddha. So you can imagine them and also the great masters of India and Tibet those who have gained realizations, those who are on the path and enlightened, so they become enlightened for the, the Buddhas, of course, are, have reached enlightenment for the sake of sentient beings. And then the Bodhisattva, Arya Bodhisattvas, who are still on the path to enlightenment, all of them, for the sake of us sentient beings, have generated bodhicitta and engaged in the path and the practices of the bodhisattvas for the benefit, solely for the benefit of us. So their intention to become enlightened and do their practices of bodhisattvas and so forth is solely for the benefit of us. So uh, think that you have uh, attained a human life now, which is endowed with the eight leisures and uh, ten uh, opportunities, and you have met with the Dharma. As Jetongkapa also says, <coughs> at the end of the uh, that he pays homage or uh, respect to the Buddha, being a monk, a yogi, and having become a, a monk in the Buddha's tradition and so forth. So all the Buddhists, of course, to consider Buddha to be an object of refuge considering the Buddha to be our teacher. So, of course, non-Buddhists would not have to take refuge in the Buddha and so forth, but you may just imagine or think of your own higher um, powers like God and so forth. So for Christians, you have the Creator God and Islam or other non-Buddhist traditions. All of them have the same message of um, cultivating uh, love, compassion, and patience. So, whatever precepts you have, all these different pr practices you have, according to your tradition, here you should have the intention and the aspiration to serve sentient, all sentient beings. So, for the Buddhists, you will take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And in this ritual for Bodhisattva vows, you say, I seek refuge in the, Buddha, uh, the three jewels. I confess all my negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtue of beings, and I take to my heart Buddha's enlightenment. In other words, what this say, last line is saying is that you will... in the, uh, have the motivation to reach Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. And therefore, what you need is 
You need, in order to be able to surf others, you need to have a form body at the physical dimension of in this uh, of a Buddha, and in order for that to happen, uh, to be achieved, to achieve that, you need to have the Dharmakaya. So with the with these two, the Dharmakaya and the Rupakaya, you can serve others. The Dharmakaya is said to be for the um, uh, one's own sake, and the Rupakaya for the sake of others. Others. And as Kundalama Rinpoche, the Tenzin Gelsen, has said, if you wish to achieve your own goals, you need you must um, practice bodhisattva, bodhicitta. If you wish to serve others, fulfill the goals of others, you need to cultivate bodhicitta and to uh, 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 to purify negativities also, you need to uh, cultivate bodhicitta. So, in other words, all kinds of fulfillments that you seek, whether temporary or uh, the ultimate, comes from bodhicitta. And therefore, you say, I seek refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha until I am uh, enlightened. In order to fulfill the interests of myself and others, I generate the mind for awakening, of awakening. By having generated the mind of a supreme enlightenment, I shall invite all sentient beings as my guests. So what would you do by inviting them as your guests? You need to actually serve them, help do something that is beneficial to them. And therefore, what you need to do is engage in the supremely appealing conduct of enlightenment. So this Buddhisattva practices are those which give, which uh, is beneficial to, solely beneficial to everyone, yourself and others. So not just generating bodhicitta, but also actually engaging in the bodhisattva practices. In order to do that, you think of achieve in reaching enlightenment. So, therefore, you say, for the benefit of all beings, may I attain Buddhahood. So please think along, uh, think uh, like that and repeat these lines. In front of you in the space, Imagine all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and uh, Avalokiteshvara Mandala with the five deities inside, with the principal deity in the center. Please repeat, I seek refuge in the three jewels. I confess all my in negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtues of, of beings. I take to my heart Buddha's enlightenment. I seek refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Supreme Assembly until I'm enlightened. In order to fulfill the interests of myself and others, I generate the mind of awakening. By generating the mind of supreme awakening, I shall invite all sentient beings and my guests. I engage in the supremely appealing contact of enlightenment. For the benefit of all beings, may I attain Buddhahood. Please repeat it for the second time. I seek refuge in the three Jews. I confess all my sins individuals. I rejoice in the virtue of beings. I take my heart in Buddha's enlightenment. I seek refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Supreme community until I am enlightened. In order to fulfill the interests of myself and others, I generate the mind of awakening. By generating the mind of full supreme awakening, I shall invite all sentient beings as my guests. I, engage in the, I shall engage in the supreme appealing conduct of enlightenment for the benefit of all beings. May I attain Buddhahood. So please repeat for the third time. Having generated the first uh, the, uh, aspiring bodhicitta, then the bodhisattva practices and go and engage in them the six uh, perfections to um, to ripen one's own self spiritually and to ripen others. These four um, four factors of gathering disciples. So, so far, we have been like slaves, enslaved by our faults, the faulty uh, destructive emotions, um, 
the uh, grasping at true existence and, uh, and also self-cherishing attitude. The arhats of the Shravakas and so forth, uh, Shravakas have, of course, reached and, uh, the, that of uh, Nirvana, but they are in um, an impartial Nirvana. Um, uh, not having completely overcome this obscuration to knowledge. And so, and they are, uh, they're still bound by the selfish attitude. And so, let us not be carried away by selfish motive, but make this pledge to uh, serve all sentient beings. And so with this, uh, you are taking the bodhisattva vows, not just generating bodhicitta, but also engaging, uh, determining to engage in the bodhisattva practices. So not just making aspiration that may I become enlightened, but that I will become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. And so, Please repeat these after His Holiness. I'll not say in English. <laughs> so a daily, on a daily basis, I do self-generation and uh, so in connection with the tantric ritual of self-initiation, uh, uh, I take bodhisattva vows and also tantric vows, especially when I'm doing the uh, deity yoga practice. I imagine, for example, when I do long li long, uh, this ritual for longevity, practice for longevity, I imagine uh, Aryatara. The, the main practice, of course, is to uh, generate um, bodhicitta. And then with the ta Aryatara in the visualizing her in front, I do generate bodhicitta and also make pledge to engage in the bodhisattva practices. So I do this daily when I do the, uh, in connection with, of course, uh, the, uh, the mandala uh, uh, rituals, this comes uh, automatically, but when I do my daily practice, I uh, repeat that in order to fulfill the interests of myself and others, I, gen I generate the mind for awakening. And so I think also of the bodhisattva practices. I shall invite all sentient beings as my guests and so forth. And so when you do this on a daily basis, because of your familiarization, not just occasionally, in connection with, uh, for example, when you do like daily yoga practice or when you have, uh, when you generate some virtuous state of mind, thinking of sent serving sentient beings and generating bodhicitta and that you will engage in the bodhisattva practices and so forth. If you do this on a daily basis, day by day, month by month, year by year, then it will, uh, you gain familiarity with it more and more. And so, you have taken the Bodhisattva vow yesterday also, and so you have received it. So here, at the end, when you say, for the benefit of all sentiments, may I attain Buddhahood, 
Imagine that uh, you have received a complete set of, uh, the full set of Bodhisattva vows, uh, just as they are in the Lama. So even if you have the uh, cause declined to it, and uh, the root downfalls and so forth, imagine that they are now uh, recovered, and whatever negativities you may have accrued going against the Bodhisattva practices and Bodhisattva, they are all recover uh, uh, cleansed, and then your Bodhisattva uh, vow is recovered. And those that have not been caused, uh, not uh, uh, you have not caused to decline, they are enhanced further. So, with regards to the uh, to the minds, so for the conventional bodhicitta, think of uh, becoming a Buddha, think of uh, achieving Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings, and then. Uh, for the ultimate uh, bodhicitta, the, you have to think of or reflect on emptiness, so meditation on emptiness. So all of you, as I said, already explained, as Bodhisattva Charya Avatara says, all suffering in the world comes from selfishness. Uh, all happiness in the world comes from wishing others to have happiness. What need is there to say more? Look at the difference between the Buddhas and the childish sentient beings. And then he's, the, uh, the, the text says that if you, uh, if you do not exchange your joy and happiness with the suffering of others, live alone, but reaching Buddhahood, even in samsara, you will not have happiness. So actually, in the world, we are more or less engaged or carry us, uh, carried out by uh, our selfish motives. So not to talk about bodhicitta, to reach Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings, but even in this life, when you are selfish, you cause all kinds of problems. So when you think of bodhicitta and have the experience, you feel... Um, calm and rested. And therefore, bodhicitta helps to purify your negativities and accumulate merit and positive energies. And therefore, bodhicitta is the foundation of for all joy and happiness, temporary as well as ultimate. And therefore, aspiring bodhicitta, let us meditate on bodhicitta first for a minute. As I already quoted Shandideva, um, therefore, which intelligent person would despair to ride the horse of Bodhicitta, which leads one from bliss to bliss? And so, as I quoted earlier, all suffering comes from uh, thinking, wishing happiness for oneself, all happiness from wishing others. So, of course, if you don't care about uh, uh, whether you want happiness or want, do not want suffering, that doesn't matter. But if you actually care about overcoming suffering and wishing to have happiness, you need to meditate and uh, cultivate bodhicitta, thinking of the benefits, the advantages of cherishing others over yourself and the disadvantage of self-cherishing attitude. And so for one minute, let us all meditate on bodhicitta. So, from the depths of your heart,
feel that this bodhicitta, which holds others, cherishes others more than oneself alone, is something incredible because all the Buddhas have become enlightened on the basis of, through the practice of bodhicitta, on the basis of this altruistic spirit of enlightenment. And Nagarjuna's Ratnavali and Chandrakirti's Madhyamaka Avatara talks about the benefit of bodhicitta a lot. So who would, who else would practice this if not us? So Buddha, we we uh, put on the robes, Buddhist uh, monks' robes. So our main uh, responsibility or job is to cultivate bodhicitta, develop bodhicitta within ourselves. And so bodhicitta is um, has two aspirations. The one is to, uh, uh, that of um, uh, wanting to become enlightened, and the other is aspiring to help other sentient beings. Sentient beings. So, as I explained yesterday, with wisdom, the Bodhisattva is focused on enlightenment, and with the body, uh, compassion, they focus on sentient beings. And so, now, having meditated on bodhicitta, imagine that this bodhicitta, this altruistic spirit of enlightenment, transforms at your heart into this conventional bodhicitta, transforms into a moon disk at your heart. And next is a meditation on the uh, ultimate bodhicitta. So what this means is... So in, in reality, of course, there is two truths taught in the scriptures. But even, even if you look at the things around you, there is a level of appearance, but not staying there. But if you delve into its nature, the deeper you'll see Things don't exist the way they appear as well. Even quantum physics talks about so what they explain is similar to how we ex um, describe things, that things uh, there is a mere appearance like the Chittamatras say so the form and so forth, form, sound and so forth, if you actually scrutinize them, you will not be able to actually find anything within that object as being sound, form and so forth. And so they say there's nothing objectively existing. So in India, People have done analysis into how things existed, and therefore Chittamatras say things have no external existence, and the Madhyamakas, particularly those who do not accept any um, objective existence of things, even conventionally, say that things have, uh, have, uh, are merely designated and that they, there's nothing whatever that we can actually pinpoint as being the core uh, identity of this and that. And so the teaching of the Buddha, which has been explicated clearly by Nagarjuna, Master Nagarjuna, using logic, so proving things logically, except few cases where he resorts to scriptural quotations, makes the teaching of the Buddha very clear. And there are many reasons to prove that things have no independent self, such as the, the diamond splinter and reasoning and so forth, but the, the, the uh, best the, the king of all reasons is the reasoning of dependent origination, 
as Master Nagarjuna says, what is said to be em- uh, dependent, what uh, rises through dependence is empty, and that is said to be um, the, the, the designated, and that is the middle way. And Buddha Palita says that if things were to have any essential ex- uh, nature in and of itself, what need is there for dependence, uh, de- a dependent de- de- designation? So if you look at things around us and uh, think of yourself, for example, on the basis of different factors, uh, the I or the person is designated, and therefore, you cannot actually have the I or a person without being designated. And therefore, that, that's what uh, Buddha Palita, in his Buddha Palita commentary, says. If there is an essential core, what need is that for designation, dependent designation? And the 400 verses also says that what is dependently arisen has no autonomy, and all these things have no independence. So what this is saying is that th- if things were dependently originated, are dependently originated, there's no independence, independent existence. But because things are all dependent, dependently designated, you'll find that what is independent and what is dependent are mutually exclusive. So things, however much you think about different things, the phenomena and so forth, you'll find that they are, they exist by way of relation to others. And so quantum physics also says that things have no objective existence. For us also, if you look at the external or internal phenomena, anything, when you do analysis of them, though in the beginning, before doing that kind of analysis, you may find, see that things, you may kind of uh, 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 perceive that things have some kind of ab- objective existence, but that's not the case that you find through ex- investigation. So those who study Buddhist classics in the monastic institutions, we memorize Buddh- Chandakirti's Madhyamaka Avatara. So as recited yesterday, if things were to have any uh, um, self-defined characteristics, and then um, and when you actually, uh, uh, there would be the uh, four absurdities and so forth, and that things are merely designated by convention, and you cannot find anything apart from being designated and so forth. And then Madhya Makavatara also goes on, say, goes on to say, so the bodhisattvas and so forth tra- journey on to that of cessation through the power of the um, conventions. So when you think, when you reflect on emptiness, you will find that ignorance has no foundation at all, although it it kind of um, grasps at some kind of a solidity, independent existence, and therefore you can find that ignorance is something that you will be able to, there's a possibility to overcome this ignorance. So though the bodhisattvas remain in absorption and emptiness and uh, see the possibility to cessation, but they feel compassion towards the helpless, uh, the um, those sentient beings without protector, protection, 
And then in the, at the end of the sixth chapter, he says, the Bodhisattvas have uh, cultivated these, both the wings, the conventional and the ultimate wings of wisdom and the uh, compassion bodhicitta, and then um, fly across to the other shore of the ocean. So therefore, now please meditate on emptiness as much as you, depending on your understanding, whatever understanding of emptiness you have, Meditate on that emptiness. Though we may say we may have this um, you know, discrimination between us and them, thinking you and me. Though this, of course, you, me, they, and um, me, us, them, and us, and so forth, do exist, but it, they do not exist the way we perceive them to be as if they are independently them or independently us or independently me and, and him or her and so forth. So the mere word ten jung, the two words, the made up of two uh, syllables, ten dependence and jung arising. So dependence does not reject the uh, emptiness, and arising does not deny the causality of things, because they are actually there in practical terms. So, ten jung, or dependent arising, is something incredible. And Jerembuche, so the childish hold on to some kind of existence, independent or objective existence, and they, they reinforce their bond to samsara. But the wise, for the wise, it is the tool to cut across all objectification. So dependent arising is something that what we are thinking of and let us all meditate on. So for us, of course, in... And of course, we have all kinds of feelings, experiences, and uh, the things that give us experiences. So they, they do exist, but they... So they affect us, giving us pleasure, pain, and so forth. But when you actually delve into their nature, the way they exist, what you find is that they are merely designated, merely dependently designated. And Jerem Buche says that the appearance, appearance in the th three principal aspects of the path, Jerem Buche says the appearance does away with the, um, the extreme of uh, existence and emptiness, the, that of the extreme of uh, nihilism. So when you understand emptiness within the understanding of cause and effect, you will not be captivated by the extremist views. So have a strong conviction that nothing whatever has any objective existence apart from being designated. Please meditate on emptiness. Oh. 
ਹਾਦਾ ਦੇ ਮਾਸੇ ਆਲੇ ਐਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਯੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਜੀ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਸੋ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਆਈ ਡੂ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟ ਜੂ ਜੂ ਸਨ ਮੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ and it has if if, if it uh, it affects us but when you actually look for its nature what you find is that you do not exist independently as it appears to and therefore this strong um clinging uh, to some kind of independent existence this ignorance is shaken so when you meditate on emptiness it will actually um uh, undermine the this ignorance the fundamental ignorance as well as this self cherishing attitude so i'm not just saying it because texts say that based from my experience Uh, over the last over 50 years so uh, when i think about when i reflect on the word dependent designation that things are dependently designated it has some kind of a weight in my understanding and it is something that i can accept oh. Of course this helps to have a calm mind and restful mind So when whoever I meet I always remain smiling and not have a, a, a stern face and so that gives me pleasure and my friends also are happy and dalai lama is most of the photos of me dalai lama show me smiling and so people around me also live happily So you don't see that a lama to have a very stern and to kind of a serious looking face in the photos and nor people around me and so this is not something that i um it's like acting but uh, this is something that happens out of um, the nature of uh, the, the practice of uh, bodhicitta and so you should also meditate on <laughs> Bodhicitta so Bob Thurman you have a, a quite a majestic look, looking face grand looking face so when you meditate on emptiness and bodhicitta you remain smiley and so this is about the the um, all encompassing yoga mind so on a daily basis so uh, this mantra that i just recited means that i will keep this uh, all encompassing bodhi uh, yoga mind and then you also after repeating after that uh, after the initiation you should uh, what you are saying is that you pledge to you pledge to ex- uh, cultivate or meditate on these two principles and the meditation on emptiness the mind transforms into vajra please repeat om sarva yoga chitta upataya mi om sarva yoga chitta upataya mi so at the heart of the lama there is a vajra the two uh, the vajra and the moon 
symbolizing these two minds and imagine replicas of the Vajra and Moon at the heart of the Master comes forth and, and uh, dissolves into the Vajra and the Moon at your heart and thereby stabilizing these two principles within you. The, as Bodhisattva Charyavatara says, Gods and demigods, be joyous. So, as I explained earlier, Tantra must be ex uh, uh, practiced in secrecy, in secret. And so, what has been said is that you should not disclose the secrecy of Tantra to those who have not entered Mandala or who do not have faith in this secret teaching. Someone this is asking to uh, run the fan rather stronger. <laughs> so having generated the all-encompassing yoga mind through meditation, you, of course, leave uh, some imprint within your mind stream through meditation. So this king of swans lead his flocks of swans with the help of the two wings of the conventional understanding of conventional wisdom and the, uh, the ultimate uh, nature of things and flies across to the other shore of the ocean. And so think of these two principles of bodhicitta and emptiness and then the, what is taught in the scriptures becomes something practical without uh, leaving them in words. So to those who have not entered the mandala and those who have no faith in the teaching, uh, to them you should not uh, disclose this teaching, this secret mantrayana. Now you are entering the mandala. Imagine you, please repeat this, Sunida, Sudoku, Susoku, Benzasadu, Adisidimam, Maharada, you are actually going around the deities inside the mandala, Om Benzasadu, Adisidimam, three times, Sunida, Sudoku, Susoku, Benzasadu, Adisidimam, Adisidimam, Touch your folded hands at the crown, throat, and heart. First, Om Nama Tehum, crown, throat, Nama Mehum, Nama Nama Soha, at the heart. So then you make request to the, uh, for the, uh, so that the wisdom beings descend. So, all the Tathagatas, bless me. Great compassionate one, please descend into me, is the text. So it, the, the T for me is more important than the wisdom being. Oh, yeah. 
the Lama and the chief, the principal deity in the manda of the mandala, are not different. So from the Riyah at the heart of the Lama, who is not distinct from the central deity, the principal deity emit rays of light, inviting the non-dual primordial awareness of great compassion. And when all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas dissolve into the disciples' bodies, recite, and then Om Vajra, Bhikshaya, ah, ah, ah. The Lama places the Vajra on your head. Next, mm -hmm. is uh, asking what kind of colors uh, appear to your eyes when you look up in the space. So uh, imagine covering the uh, eyes with a blindfold and then lifting it up, immediately look up in the sky in the space. Some, sometimes it so happens that when uh, the some, uh, some things appeared, when I was once receiving the uh, Vajrapani uh, Mahak Chakra initiation, uh, at this point I saw uh, some color. So look up in the space, blind, uh, taking off the blindfold, and uh, lifting the blindfold and look up in the space. Please repeat this. Sri Benza Gorda, Hayagiva, Hulu Hulumbe. You are going around the mandala three times. Sri Benza Gorda, Hayagiva, Sri Benza Gorda, Hayagiva, Hulu Hulu Hulumbe. Sri Benza Gorda, Hayagiva, Hulu Hulu Hulumbe. And next, the the Lama invokes the power, uh, praise to the mandala deities. So please hold your flower in your hands and imagine that you are offering the flowers to the mandala, in, in the mandala. So with dam, the flower, garland of flowers blessed. So imagine that you are inside the mandala, in front of the mandala deities. So uh, offer the flower to the uh, mandala deities. So imagine you have offered your flowers to the mandala deities. So the, um, the lord of the lineage here is uh, Amitabha. So the secret name is either Dharma Vajra or Lotus Vajra or Padma Vajra. So here for you, whether you are uh, uh, here personally or in, in or do you uh, uh, are taking this and uh, listening to me on online? Your secret name is Dharma Vajra. So imagine 
Imagine whom are and om at your heart, throat, and uh, uh, crown. Please remove the blindfold. So having having removed the blindfold. Imagine that you are now able to see Avalokiteshvara, Mandala, and the deities very clearly and directly. So the deities are being introduced. So you are able to see all the deities and the mandala. Deities uh, like Avalokiteshvara, the main deity in the front, in the center, Avakchobia in the east, Ratnasambhava in the south, uh, Varachana in the west, and Amogasiti in the north. One can directly, you can directly see the uh, mandala and the deities. The entire mandala, in other words. Please make an offering for of mandala for the initiations. Please repeat these request lines. So the, the disciples are in the form of Avalokiteshvara with one face and two hands at, at the eastern door of the mandala. So here there are two mainly two initiations, the water initiation and the crown initiation. The first is for Dharmakaya, the, the leaving the imprints or the potential for Dharmakaya, and the second one, the crown initiation for the potential, leaving the potential in your mind for um, the, uh, Rupakaya. So first is water empowerment. <coughs> so the deity of initiation are uh, invited and the deities in the mandala who have been meditated upon and uh, accomplished intend to confer the initiations. And then the deities making offerings. Of course, the activity the assistant here holds the vase, but you have to imagine innumerable numbers of innumerable numbers of or countless numbers of deities of initiation. So they pour this water on your crown, imagine that the deities, the initiation deities, are conferring the initiation upon you by pouring this water from the vase on your crown. So the 
master is reciting the lines of auspiciousness in relation to the Buddha Dharma and Sangha. May you, your mind stream be moistened by the uh, bodhicitta. <clears throat> so your body is filled with the water and you the overflowing water that has been poured into you uh, overflowing water uh, fills up on your crown and that transforms into uh, the lot uh, the uh, lot of the lineage the, the Tathagatas. So the water empowerment is attained and stains of five defilements are purified and the abodes of the five consciousnesses are transformed and you are empowered with meditate on the yogi path without characteristics and the potential to actualize the resultant dharmakaya is specially placed in your continuum. Please make the mandala offering requesting for the next initiation now. So that was mandala offering. So for attaining the rupakaya, so with bodhicitta, what you intend to attain mainly is the, uh, the rupakaya, which is meant for serving other sentient beings. And so the uh, rupakaya actually appears to disciples and thereby serves their needs. So in order to serve others fully, effortlessly, we need to attain both the Dharmakaya and the Rupakaya, without which you cannot uh, fulfill the uh, needs of others uh, effortlessly. And therefore, in order to serve others, the, uh, though you, uh, it, uh, you should attain Dharmakaya, but you also need the, the Rupakaya. And again, the, uh, the initiation beings are invoked. So the Lama is invoking the deities of the man, uh, initiation. So the mandala deities intend to confer the initiations. So this is the crown ornament of the five Tathagata families. It bestows empowerment on you, to the fortunate ones. It brings the completion, uh, brings to completion the qualities of body, speech, and mind. May you quickly attain brotherhood for the five fa of the five families. So the, you should think that you now have received this crown initiation. So you made offerings. So this leaves the special imprint or potential for the Rupakaya. Please repeat this mantra. Om Mani Peme Hum. Om Mani Peme Hum. Om Mani Peme Hum. This is the mantra transmission. Let us say 21 times Om Mani Peme Hum together. Om Mani Peme Hum. 
So imagine from the heart of the Lama, who is not different from the main deity in the mandala, there is in the set, uh, at the heart of the Lama, there is a um, imagine a moon disk, and on it a, a Shri syllable, and marked with a whom, and around the Shri, imagine the. The, the uh, man mantra and the chain of this mantra comes from the heart of the ma master up his body out of his mouth and enters your mouth and gone down and, uh, your body and is placed uh, in the uh, your heart so that it leaves uh, 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 some uh, potential beginning with a small and then increasing further and further so that you in your um, uh, uh, compassion increases and then your um, experience of bodhicitta and then going along the paths of accumulation onto the path of preparation and prepar uh, the uh, path of seeing when you see the uh, emptiness directly and then the path of meditation and then finally, that of Buddhahood. As um, the, uh, we explain on the basis of the um, Heart Sutra Mantra, Gate Gate Para Gate Para Sangate Bodhiswaha, so our goal is enlightenment. So by traveling along the path to enlightenment, as long as space endures, as long as sentient beings remain, so long may I too remain to dispel the miseries of transmigrators. This is a prayer that I say every day. And so you should have the courage to uh, travel along the path like that, uh, to become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings, and uh, therefore repeat, repeat recite the mantra. Imagine the mantra's chains coming out of the master, entering your body. And there's a place, the, that garland of mantra, is placed at your heart. Next is the permission initiation. So the Lama actually tells you, the disciples, to imagine this and that, but I actually take tea. In Lhasa, in the past, there was a nomad who had brought a piece of butter, and as he was sitting amongst the audience receiving some initiation from a lama, and heard the lama all the time saying, imagine receiving this initiation, that initiation, and so forth. In the end, he took out his butter from his chupa and said, lama, imagine that I've given this to you, and put it back into his pocket. <laughs> so what you what you do after uh, sitting on a throne dharma throne is to turn the wheel of dharma to give teachings to others 
So you are given the scripture, the conch. So the scripture of the three uh, lineages of the Kriya Tantra. So, to teach others, you are given the uh, authority. So, in accordance with the mental dispositions of disciples, the Buddha has given the teachings comprised in the hundreds volumes of our Kanjur, the translated words of the Buddha, and then we also have those of the uh, Tenjur, the translated exegetical treatises. And so you need also to do uh, teach according to the mental dispositions of B, uh, the disciples. So you who rule the, the kingdom of Dharma, you're given these seven emblems, royal emblems. Next, we'll do the uh, the permission initiation of Simanada Avalokiteshvara. So I've done the preliminary uh, practices to give this permission. So in the front, there is Avalokiteshvara Simhanada. Imagine that streams of nectar flow from Simanada, thereby giving birth to the Vajra disciples. So the true suffering uh, and true origin of suffering, those of the afflictions, mental afflictions and karma are cleansed through the practice of bodhicitta and the uh, meditation of view of emptiness through which the water is blessed and so this water is sprinkled so that the all the negativities and the uh, obscurations of the disciples are cleansed so all the obscurations and negativities of the disciples are pacified or 
So all the negativities So all the sicknesses, all um, uh, harmful spirits and all harms and uh, untimely death and uh, uh, all uh, the kind of grudge and then uh, obscurations and uh, negative spells and unfortunate circumstances and uh, unfortunate uh, bad omens and uh, un uh, bad dreams in auspicious circumstances uh, so forth are all cleansed or pacified and all the obstructions, obstacles. So imagine that you are given a, 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 a little water, which you uh, take and keep, uh, hold it in your mouth, and then this ritual. Again, the same old sicknesses, diseases, uh, grudges, obscurations, all on bad omens bad signs, bad dreams, inauspicious circumstances, and nocturnal um, um, harms, evil beings, um, messengers of death, and all obstacles, and uh, perverted beings are pacified. So I've done these uh, self-generation and so forth of the Simhanada. So imagine me as Simhanada and imagine that I have given you great protection. So you are protected from all negativities and obscurations with this mantra, Amraksha Raksha mantra. So the diseases are protect, you are protected from diseases, harms, uh, time, untimely death, grudges, and obscurations, black spells, bad omens, bad signs, bad dreams, inauspiciousness, says and nocturnal homes and uh, the lessons of evils, evil beings, and so forth. So through the blessing of uh, the uh, Simhanada, I have protected these, uh, my disciples, and therefore nobody should harm them. So with this, so there is still the genang, uh, the subsequent permission of body, speech, and mind left. <laughs> Yeah, 
So the disciples arise or transform into Simanada. You are in the form of our uh, Simhanada. So from within the Shunyata, uh, the, uh, having said the Shunyata mantra, you uh, dissolve in emptiness. From the state of emptiness, you arise, you imagine a red lotus arising, upon which is a syllable sing, which transforms into a reclining white line whose head is turned right, facing upwards, its orange mane flowing downwards. It is draped in uh, jewel pendants. Uh, atop the line, there's a syllable R transforming into a moon disk. On, its, on it is uh, a white syllable Shri, which emits rays of light, making offerings of, to noble beings and purifying the negativities and karmas, obscurations of sentiment, thus leading them to the enlightened state, the noble. And then um, the right lays are drawn back into the Shri syllable, which transforms into the, yourself as Reverend uh, Singhanada, white in color, having one face, two hands, right hand stretched on the knee, right knee in the gesture of bestowing supreme uh, spiritual feats and left resting at the back on the cushion and you uh, have three eyes um, and your dreadlock is tied upwards in a bun um, top, tied upwards and you sit with your left leg stretched in the majestic posture of a king unadorned you, uh, by adornments uh, you are, appear as an ascetic, and you uh, have uh, you're wearing a Brahma string, uh, and then you wear a red skirt, and your left uh, chest is covered with the height of a black deer, and your right is a tri tri uh, the trishul tri trident, and um, uh, on which is a, uh, a snake wrapping around with its head upwards, and on the left is a lotus, which is skull cup. With, uh, which is a skull cup filled with various flowers. On the three, tree of the white lotus, open at the level of your ear, is blazing s wisdom sword, and you are adorned with the uh, marked with Om Ah Hum. And then you are given the blessings of body, speech, and mind. So by devoutly imagining the master as real, Samanada Avalokiteshvara himself from the, your heart, and from the heart of the master, right lays, rays uh, in, um, radiate, invoking the front generated deity, thereby right ray radiates from his heart, uh, invoking all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in ten directions, and thus from the heart of the master, the front generated deity and the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, ten directions, uh, from the ten directions emanates innumerable bodies of the Simanada of Avalokiteshvara, and they dissolve, they come down in, the form, in big and small sizes and dissolve into you. And, they, and thereby you receive the body uh, initiation. And then you receive this mantra, this uh, initiation of speech. Repeat this. Just Omarshi Simanada Humpe. Omarshi Simanada Humpe. Omarshi Simanada Humpe. So there is a longer mantra, the Dharani of uh, Simanada.
So may the disciples receive the body, speech, and mind, Simhanada of Simhanada Varukhiteshwara. And so you make a fervent prayer, uh, supplication, and then you receive. So you make a request for the blessings of Simhanada with this fervent prayer. Deities come forth and they dissolve into you and thereby you gain the potential for achieving all kinds of qualities of Simanada Avalokiteshwara, especially body, speech, and mind. And Whatever qualities, uh, good qualities you have already developed, they increase, and those that you've not, you have not yet uh, received, uh, you receive it freshly, and uh, so your mind stream is blessed. So for the mind, mind uh, gen, uh, blessing, you imagine all the uh, the symbols of Simanata dissolving into you. And that becomes inseparable from your, um, the C syllable at your heart. And so I have given the Avalokiteshwara thousand arm, thousand eye Avalokiteshwara initiation, and also the Simhanada Avalokiteshwara blessing. So following the Buddha, having become a monk and becoming learned, and I respect him my respect to the Buddha. So, likewise, as I pray, not only the human beings, uh, I've, uh, earlier also I have made a special determination. May I have actually thought of uh, giving the blessings to every one on this planet, particularly the human beings as well as non-human beings. So having created this spiritual bond now, now through this, you, in order to start the path leading to Buddhahood, as referred by the the Gade Gade Mantra, you should actually start it in this life, so that you reach, you progress along the paths and the grounds of Bodhisattvas and culminating in Buddhahood. So, I will, of course. Pray for you, for your success in this venture, and you should also put effort in this. So the practically what you should do is to, to discipline your own mind. Therefore, whatever I have, um, uh, I could remember and uh, reflect, I have shared it with you. And so with regard to the Dharma, it is twofold, these Dharma of transmissions and those of the experiential realization. And it does not help to have offerings displayed and so forth. But what we must do is, as uh, Vasubandhu, Master Vasubandhu says, to, to preserve the Dharma, 
The only ways are through study and practice, and therefore, you should study the text, whether they are lengthy ones or short ones, and then reflect on whatever you have studied over and over again, so that you gain some conviction in them. In the beginning, having heard the teaching, you may feel, oh, it's wonderful. But through reflection and constant reflection, you will feel convinced that there's no other way than for me to actually cultivate bodhicitta, to develop bodhicitta within myself. So through reflection, you gain that conviction in the t dharma. And having gained this conviction, trust, and confidence, then you develop the experience within yourself through constant familiarization. Of course, single-pointed meditation, concentration, and so forth would uh, come later, but you should do Bear in your mind that you should at least be practical about the teaching. So we have created this bond between ourselves as Lama and disciples. So this karmic connection will continue from life after life, for life after life. And therefore, as you practice, you should also, to the best of your ability, share your own thinking, your own thoughts. As, to, as of distributing your knowledge, your um, th thoughts to others. So I have done that to you, and you should also do the same, same with your friends and families as best as you can. You should, you should actually teach others. So from one, you would have 10 people to whom you share, and those 10 would each share to another, another 10 uh, people each. And in this way, you can increase exponentially from 1 to 10, 10 to 100, 100 to 1,000, and so forth. And so I have been meditating the teaching on the teaching of the Buddha. And from my own experience, I have shared my experience and knowledge with you, and you should do the same. So, this time, our virtuous practice is uh, now uh, coming to completion. We should dedicate all the virtues through these dedication prayers. Like Manjushri, and also um, uh, Bhatra and so forth. So while I do the concluding ritual, uh, you may recite Arapatsana, the Manjushri Mantra. Om Arapatsana, Manjushri, the deity of wisdom. So I have been doing meditation on Manjushri since my childhood. So I also feel that I, am, I do receive and uh, the blessings of Manjushri since childhood. And therefore, 
We have already done the recitation of man, money mantra. Now please repeat Omara Pazanadi mantra. Omara Pazanadi, Omara Pazanadi, Omara Pazanadi. The dedication verses that His Holiness repeat recited was just as the brave Manjushri and Samadha Bhadra too realized things as they are. Also, I dedicate all these merits in the best way that I may follow the oh. perfect example. I dedicate all these roots of virtue with the dedication praised as the best by the victorious ones, thus gone of the three times, so that I might perform the noble bodhisattva deeds. So we, we have completed the, the Dharma discourse this time. Due to the pandemic, there's restriction on, on gathering, big gatherings of people together. And so this uh, web cast has been quite... Um, um, uh, because of that, the, the, we could actually um, spread this message to a large extent, widely. So because of the pandemic, I got a very good rest. So physically, I got good rest. But my speech, because of the webcast, this teaching has spread widely, not only human beings, but even the um, uh, uh, gods, uh, demigods, and so forth, may also have benefit, uh, may also benefit from this, as I have already made the intention earlier. And when we do long uh, uh, the retreat on long life practice, 
So Tata Rinpoche used to say that the Lama and the disciples have a great time. And when he actually said this line, um, which says uh, there is a continuous uh, uh, offering of tea and alcohol, and he would actually uh, look at me smilingly. And so, Please take care. Kundu Sambote and Tashin did a talk. It's just a dollop. She gave it up and just wrote down what is Mushi. She gave it to my condition. You also judge him on the same thing with the Charles, no, no, she needs some it. Oh, yeah, that is.